some guys have few uh, Mexi uh, Mexican um, and they had to fight against racism problems. Do you think that those problems make um, artists in a way sensible for, for music? Well, I think in El Paso it went both ways. Like, it's 88% Hispanic, so I'm white. I got, I got a lot of it as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And then because we chose to be artists, or we didn't choose to be artists, but because we're artists, then you get it on top of that. You know, you get the, the double, you know, like you walk down the street and people just scream whatever, long hair, faggot, whatever their stupid inbred way of talking is. Mm -hmm. Do you think Europeans are a bit more tolerant in that way? Yeah. yeah I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Like this, this culture is more based on art and expression than ours. Our culture is based on like uh, being tough and kicking ass. Yeah. Okay. Also einige der Bands kommen ja aus, also haben ja mexikanische Abstammung und hatten auch einige Probleme, Rassismus bezogen Probleme hat er jetzt auch, wenn er zum Beispiel in Texas jetzt so rumrennt mit langen Haaren, dann wird ihm auch nachgeschrieben, so wegen blöder Langhaariger oder sonst irgendwas. Und ähm, sie sehen halt schon, dass Europa um einiges toleranter ist, was dieses betrifft, ja. Und tolerant geht es weiter im Programm, nämlich mit guter Rock and Roll Musik. Das war jetzt Jimmy Eat World für euch, unsere Turok Haus und Hofband. So in an interview, the singer of Jimmy Eat World said that when he toured around with you, he's never like nervous before before he's having a gig. But when he went on stage after your gig, he was totally nervous and excited <laughs> about that because you rocked the show so much and the crowd was so full of energy. What do you think about those things? Well, we just we love those guys in general. They're, they're some of our best friends in music, I would have to say. And, um, we're just happy that they're, they finished a new record and we can't wait, for, can't wait to actually hear it. Uh, we, that tour was two weeks long. It was before, it was in March of 99, before the first time we came here to Europe. And uh, it's some of, the, some of the funnest times we've ever done, you know, like touring. We just toured the East Coast with them and, and uh, we just like to say hi to them. We, we love those guys a lot. They rule. Yeah, and also the connection with Get Up Kids, like the 22 dates you did with them, they were like just amazing. And um, they rule. Why, why does this connection work so much? Like this emo core, and I think you're not not in this genre. I don't see you there. I don't we're see just you in any this, genre. We're just the same age. Mm, do you think it's the age thing? Yeah, I think it's totally the age thing because yeah. we go on tour with bands that we can identify with. Mm. We can identify with people our age. Like, and also the crowd. I mean, the crowd got it. The yeah, yeah, and, and I mean. Plus, we were pretty, I mean, we were small when we were touring with those bands, so, you know, it was good for us to play to different people, like a different batch of people than we would normally play to. Mm -hmm. We're not interested in doing just boring, like, every band on the show will sound like us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, that's really bad. Okay, wonderful. So, die waren ja mit Jimmy Eat World auf Tour und der Sänger von Jimmy Eat World hat ja behauptet, dass ähm, nachdem er auf die Bühne gegangen ist, nachdem die gespielt haben at the Driver, da war er richtig nervös und aufgeregt. Hat nämlich gespürt, welche Energie vom Publikum ausging und was die ausgelöst haben. Und sie sagen selbst auch, dass sie also mit der Band sich prächtig verstanden haben und eben diese Kombination, die hat, hat so einfach gerockt. Und auch mit dem Get Up Kids, das ja auch jetzt so aus dem Genre Emo Chor stammt, hatten sie auch super Konzerte, eine super Tour und er glaubt halt auch, dass es viel mit dem Alter zusammenhängt, weil das sind ja irgendwie so gleiche Liga und sie hatten auch Spaß und es ist auch mal spannend auf ein Konzert zu gehen, wo nicht alles irgendwie so einem Genre entspricht. So, um, Rage Against the Machine, that wasn't that good. I've heard, like, like you said, you had problems there. What were the problems? I, I wouldn't say it was all not good. It was an amazing learning experience for us. It was, it was just difficult for us, a band that, I mean, when we did that tour, like, if, if, if a certain amount of people have heard about us now, way less have heard about us, you know, back then. And uh, the first show we played with them was their biggest show of that tour, which was in Detroit. It was 22,000 people. And they had opened the doors a little bit early, so by the time we got on stage, there was probably about 14,000 people in the place. So they probably they don't want to hear you. you know, I'm, I'm sure they definitely didn't want to hear us. But by the fourth song, there was about you know, 6,000 people flipping us off. and. Uh, but we became a tighter band actually, it was a benefit because we would finish the song and start the next one immediately before they could start chanting rage. So uh, it, was, it was positive. And then they were really good people. In general, they are a very, very good example of, at least for me, you know, how to be a big band because they have none of the, the typical, let's, you know, let's have groupies in the back and drugs and blah, blah, blah. They're just a normal band, normal four people that 
I think respect music and just just good people in general. So it was, it was that was a very good experience in that respect. Mm -hmm. A tough school to go through. Yeah, exactly. How many people can say they've been flipped off by six thousand people? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're special. <laughs> also, sie waren ja auch mit Rage Against the Machine auf Tour und das lief ja jetzt nicht ganz so toll für sie, weil sie ja gleich irgendwie so vor sich 14.000 Menschen spielen mussten und ähm, die waren jetzt nicht gar so gespannt auf At The drive und haben dann auch irgendwie so Zwischenrufe wie Rage, Rage, Rage geschrien und das ist halt nicht so toll, aber es war eine gute Schule, durch die sie gegangen sind und sie sagen auch, dass es ähm, toll war, Rage Against the Machine kennenzulernen, weil die nicht dieses scheiß Rockstar-Ding mit Groupies und Drogen und sonstigen durchziehen, sondern halt einfach irgendwie ihren Weg der Musik nachgehen. So, now it's time for your request a clip. Okay. I'm gonna request the, I think the newest video so far off uh, Kid A from Radiohead. It's called Optimistic. I think it's amazing because it's just, uh, it's just four digital cameras that it just flips through all four cameras like really fast. No, no set changes. It's just film, and I love it. It's live. It's perfect. Okay, and you? Radiohead. <laughs> Fake plastic trees because I'm obsessed with them. Totally obsessed with Radiohead. I think they're the greatest. Fucking rock band on earth. Ihr habt's gehört, Radiohead jetzt im Doppelpaket für euch und wiederher. So, liebe Zuschauer, weiter geht's jetzt mit At the Drive In. So, I saw your live clip before and it was just like, wow, what's going on there? What, what do you think in those moments? Like, totally freaking out. It's such an amazing picture to see you live. What's, what's going on in your, in your mind in that very moment? I think unity and honesty. I think. Uh, I think we care for each other a lot, and I think you could feel it on stage because nothing's acted out or anything. It's just it's just our hearts, and sometimes it's low energy for us, and sometimes it's, it's a lot of energy. It just depends on what we're feeling that certain day. You know, it's it's honesty. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's nothing. What tonight we're drinking? <laughs> tonight we're just drinking and going on stage and see what happens. <laughs> But I've read also that you're a bit bored of playing this album because it has been produced like last year. Number one most asked question is... <laughs> Number one asked question. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going so around. So will yes. be this EP. Yeah. Oh, and no, no. An EP, right? I read that. That's no. It, that you want to do something in Australia, EP? No, oh, it's a full length. We're, we're going to write our next record in Australia. Okay, in yeah. Australia? We loved it. It, it, was, really it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, super cool place. Is it good to produce there as well? Like, I think so. Like. Just the vibe we had, you know, like just going and hanging out on the beach and um, maybe because we're from the desert, like it sort of feels the same, but it has this beach as well and I don't know. It has kind of a European city as well, Melbourne's sort of European-ish, like really bohemian and cool. And it just seemed like something fun, because like, we can, basically, because <laughs> we can actually stop our tour and go write a record because nobody can tell us what to do, so, because we can, <laughs> that's why we're doing it. Ja, also sie sind ja schon für ihre Live-Performance gut verschrieben, weil da passiert ja einiges. Sie drehen ja komplett durch und ich habe jetzt vor ein paar Stunden erst den Live-Clip gesehen und war schon ziemlich begeistert von dem. Es kann aber auch sein, dass sie einfach nur ganz ruhig auf der Bühne stehen und sich gar nicht bewegen, weil er sagt, es ist immer so tagesformabhängig. Heute wird gesoffen, also mal schauen, was passiert. Und was auch noch passieren wird, ist, dass sie ein Album produzieren und zwar in Australien, weil sie den Vibe gut finden und weil sie da prima abschalten können. So what's definitely like happening next? So you're gonna produce your album, the tour? Do we see you somewhere on festivals? Um, we're not sure yet. Um, well, we're, we're for sure going to play uh, Fuji Rock in Japan. And, uh, and we're for sure going to, at the end of the year, go to uh, Australia. That's all we really know right now. <laughs> oh, well, nice taking plans. our time. Yeah, taking our time to relax and just to relax a little bit. Because doing three continents in about two months now has been pretty wearing on us and uh so we're ready for a break you gotta Absolutely. work it out <laughs> yeah work take just time. just take time and just to realize what's been happening because when you're actually in it you don't really you don't really know what's going on you know yeah. So, also sie nehmen sich jetzt mal so eine kleine Auszeit. Sie werden beim Fuji Rock Festival in Japan noch zu sehen sein und werden dann halt Ende des Jahres in Australien im Studio rumtüfteln an einem neuen Album und ihr seht jetzt erstmal was von der wunderbaren Live Performance von At the Driving. Das war's von Tour. Спасибо, папа.